What's up everyone? This is Elijah coming at you with another video from the App Lifestyle, the place where the world is literally in the palm of your hands. And I have a request to make this video from a uh, loyal subscriber. And it might be something that all y'all been wondering, but what navigation should you use for Uber Eats? So you got uh, three main choices out there. You have the Uber navigation, you have Google Maps, and you have uh, Waze. Now I have addressed navigation in general in part four of the Uber Eats course. I personally always use Waze, but we're gonna go over the pros and cons of uh, all three. So uh, first up, we have the Uber navigation. So uh, what's, what's the major pro of using the Uber navigation? Well, everything is contained inside the Uber app, so you never have to exit it. So to some level, that's pretty convenient. So when you're inside the app, pressing uh, start delivery or just anything you need to do inside the app when you press navigate everything is inside the app so if a customer messages you it pops up inside the app and you see it like right there so that's the biggest pro to using the uber navigation now what are the cons well, uh, the biggest con <laughs> is you'd be lucky if you don't get parked up a tree and I'm not even being completely funny about that. You can Google all kinds of situations where you see people end up in strange locations because the Uber navigation told them to go that way. There's an article years ago about how someone ended up in the middle of a park because they blamed it on the Uber navigation. Now, that might be a little far-fetched, but it really wouldn't surprise me. Now, in Uber's defense has gotten better over the years, but it's no by no means perfect. So I, I tend to leave the navigation to the people who are the professionals. But it does have those pros that I mentioned as far as just everything being inside the app. And the biggest one about that is you can see like the customer messages and you can communicate with the customer all in the app without having to leave. Moving on to Google Maps. So the biggest pro to Google Maps is in a lot of cases, they'll find you the fastest route and all the how it finds this route is based on satellite data and it pings all the phones in the area, their positions, their speed, and it takes all that data to come up with the fastest route for you. And that's pretty cool if you ask me. That's this biggest pro. Another pro is it's a ad free, so there aren't any advertisements on it. That's actually a pro for the Uber navigation too, so there aren't any advertisements. At least I consider it a pro. So what are the cons of using Google Maps? Well, they always put you on the highway. Like nine times out of 10, they interpret fastest route as highway. And let's say if you turn highways off, well, they don't find the best or fastest route if you're not using the highways. So there are other apps like uh, Waze, which I'm about to get to, that will find you a faster route and it doesn't include the highways if it's saturated. So there's that. And finally, we say the best for last, but what are the pros and cons of Waze? So the pros, and I do go into detail into all these pros in part four of the Uber East driver course. So if you want more elaboration, go revisit part four. One of the pros of Waze is it's gonna find the fastest route for you and use all the factors in the equation. So let's say if you don't like highways, you just want to turn them off or the highway is slammed with traffic. It's not going to just automatically throw you on there. It's going to find the fastest and most efficient route based around those highways. And with that being the case, it may actually have you take the highway up to a point where traffic's going to get bad, take you off, and then you can use the streets from there. And other navigations don't tend to always do that. Another pro is since it is a user generated navigation experience, it will let you know about cops if people were like putting in the app that there's a cop there so it's always good to know that a cop is waiting for you so you can slow down or whatever in all fairness you should be following the law anyway but it still doesn't hurt to know that information and the biggest pro in my opinion is the fact that you can put in hot spots in the Waze app itself so you could say put in the address of a sprouts or a whole foods or jack-in-the-box whatever and you can save that location in the app. So why is that important to Uber Eats? Well, if y'all have followed the Uber Eats course, y'all know that hotspots are vital to making more money on Uber Eats. So with Waze, you can put those hotspots in your navigation. So when you complete a delivery, wait a few minutes, see if you get a ping, but you can automatically start 
navigating to the closest hotspot. Just press a few buttons as opposed to having to not use navigation at all or having to put the address in manually with the other navigate well google maps and that that's another con about the uber navigation is this isn't even an option on that now on google maps you have to input the address to navigate you back to the spot but that's not very convenient so that's the biggest pro in my opinion now what's the con of ways you will see some advertisements every now and then so it'll try and persuade you to drive somewhere anytime you stop at a red light I personally don't understand the point of advertising on navigation apps because I don't think it's the safest thing. But that aside, it might just be a little annoying. Another con, and this is more on a local level, but Waze is a user-generated platform, so it depends on how many people are inputting data. Like, hey, there's heavy traffic here. Hey, there's a detour here. Hey, this road is blocked off. So if not that many people are using Waze in your city, then you may not get all the information you need like you would on Google Maps that just takes a bunch of satellite data and uh, kind of estimates what's going on. Obviously, there is some reporting going on, but it's not done by the users, so they pick up on everything. In my experience, I'm in a big market. I'm in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth market, and there are a lot of people who use Waze, so it's pretty much on the level as Google Maps when it comes to that, but if you're in a smaller market where not that many people use Waze, that could be a potential con. With those things being said, you have the pros and cons of each app navigation so that you can decide which one you want to use. I'm always going to stick with Waze, if anything, because of those hotspots. I like convenience at any time. I don't want to be inputting the address to navigate back to the hotspot when I just press a few buttons. It just makes it more simple and more efficient. But if y'all have any questions or comments, leave them below. And which navigation are you using and why? Some of y'all prefer the pros of some of the other apps. You may like the Uber navigation because the customer messages you and it pops up on the screen, just like right there, as opposed to the other apps. It may not notify you in the way you want and you, you may miss it. You might like that just extra awareness of what's going on. You may like Google Maps because that satellite data, you can have full confidence that anything that comes up, it's gonna let you know about it. Let's hear it in the comments below. And if you're like me, you probably like Waze because of all those list of reasons. And I didn't even really name them all. If you want to know all of them on Waze, go to part four of the Uber Eats course. But I'll catch y'all in the next video. Don't forget to get out there, make money, be profitable, and be safe. Catch you later.